Hello people of YouTube and the one and a half of you that follow me. Welcome to the bottom skins. Uh, 17 minutes, 24 seconds of your life, you'll never get back. You start off with the uh, aileron and flap gap fairing. And apparently I just sit around and look at my phone. Um, this one's not... I mean, the flap gaps are not all that hard. Uh, I do remember near the uh, four ribs closest together by the fuselage, i.e. the step ribs, there was there was a few in there that were troublesome, but not too bad. Uh, also, right there, you see me uh, looking at my phone, right there by the aileron bracket, I had to use a... Um, a pop rivet. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but uh, I did email Vans on that, and they said yes, you will have to use a pop rivet. Um, I will try and look that up while I'm doing my commentary here to tell you exactly what I used in that. Um, yeah, and so here I'm doing the. GMU 22 bracket. I have a strong feeling I won't use the GMU 22, but what I like about it is the fact that that bracket slides out. So even if I mount an 11 on top of that bracket, I know it's level with the wings. And now we're to the worst part by far of anything to do with the bottom skins, and that is figuring out how you're going to do your pedo mast because there is absolutely nothing in the plans not that i don't know maybe that shouldn't be expected because there's so many different types of ways to do pedo systems uh, as you can tell um i decided to do mine one bay away from where the aileron bell crank was some people will do it inside of that so that then they're kind of competing with the um, big torque tube I didn't want to be anywhere close to competing with the torque tube so I opted to just go one more bay outboard um. yeah and so the next well, we have at least 15 minutes is, well, okay, there's the aileron bracket again. And yeah, you have to attach the aileron bracket to the J channel, then slide that through on this skin. Every other skin, you can back rivet. You don't have to worry about the J channel being in there, and then you can just slide it right in. Unfortunately, the first skin that you start with, not so much. Um, once again, the area where there are four ribs for this step, pretty troublesome and pretty painful. Uh, getting your hand through there and all that stuff is just, it's a lot of work. I cannot find uh, my email from what I used for the pop rivet. You can see the aileron bracket, it's left side sticking straight up, not angled out, that, that'd that be flat, but the aileron, um, I believe it is on, yeah, it was on the, oh, actually you can see it. It's on the left side of that aileron bracket. There's one pop rivet right there at the flap gap fairing and that would be on the aileron side and because the aileron has new bracketry so to speak um, to kind of beef that up that's why it then warranted a pop rivet
This is um, probably going to be a rather boring video, just mostly because it's just me doing a whole lot of riveting. I will say um, I have probably two or three blemishes. Um, you know, luckily this is bottom skins, right? So nobody's going to see that. Thank God. But um, when it's a one-man job, it is it is particularly tough to know that you have that bucking bar 90 degrees to the skin. I always did what um, my AMP buddy taught me, which was before you go to rivet, find a flat part of the skin and put the bucking bar to that so that you can kind of feel what it is what 90 degrees is and then you can go over to the rivet and put it on the rivet and know that you're close to 90 degrees uh, right there I just flared the lines for the pedo um, it took me a long time I finally found connectors that would go from the plastic tubing to the flare that also had a 90 degree to them um, I know a lot of people, they would just go from that flare to a straight, and then they would use also a 90 degree with a very short piece of tubing. So essentially you had a 90 degree and a straight to the flare. I didn't particularly love that because that's just one more place for all of that stuff to leak. So if I could find something that was 90 degrees straight to the flare, then that was one less component that could leak. I don't, uh, I think it was 3 eighths is the, 3 eighths MPT is what's coming off of the pedo, and then it's uh, one quarter inch tubing. So just had to Google search one quarter inch tubing to 3 eighths MPT and eventually something popped up of course it was one of those sites where the minimum purchase was 10 of them so now I have 8 of them sitting around my house doing absolutely nothing I guess that's for 4 more builds as if anybody would be crazy enough to do this a second time much less 4 more times really makes you wonder about the uh, mental state of those people that say they're like a Lindy winner, six-time builder, yada, yada. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't even imagine. They're, uh, they're a special kind of breed if that's all uh, slow builds, too. After doing all slow builds, I can see the value in a quick build. Um, I like the fact that I did slow build for the first, but if I ever decide to do a 10 or a 15 or anything like that, I think uh, I think quick build may be in my future. So here, just uh, just finishing up the bottom ribs. These ones towards the outer end, they they get. That's where I had more of my blemishes. Is about the second to the third bay on the outer edge there, because you just have to reach so far in, and it's you just at some point in time it makes it real easy to accidentally have the bar at a 45 degree angle, not a 90 degree angle. And then the last thing you'll do is just the two overlapping areas here. I didn't find these particularly tough. Once you're, uh, once you've done some of the harder areas, 
like that overlap seemed hard initially it wasn't uh, here I'm doing the uh, aileron trim servo there's nothing in particularly hard about this either it's um I do remember though uh, stripping the wires for whatever reason those smaller whatever they were 24 gauge or they felt like 30 gauge those those wires were I definitely cut one more times than I stripped it um, I have a short on how to find exactly neutral on that um, I would uh, highly recommend going back and looking at that because uh seems very advantageous to find neutral. Now, here is the key part about doing the bottom skins, the thing that will save you the most amount of time. Do this before you even start putting on skins because I even talked to a technical guy at Vans, and I said, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mount this trim servo up. I'm going to put the... I've already built the aileron torque tubes, so I'm going to attach those, and then I'm going to figure out neutral. I'm going to get all the springs set up and everything. And uh, I feel like I won, like, a Emmy from Vans Aircraft because uh, he said that most people do not think that far ahead and he said he wished he could explain how to kind of jump around in the steps but he said if he did that you know it would just it would be chaos for some people their minds just don't work like that but he said that there is practically no way to set up your um aileron trim on the access panel without already having to have built all of that stuff and he said that it is by far the best way to do it is to build up the the aileron actuations and then put that access panel on so that you can find exactly neutral so anyways it with that said it also seemed like Neutral wasn't absolutely needed because it's not even possible. Once you put on the bottom skins and you put that access panel in, trying to mark a center line on that torque tube is impossible. It's not going to happen. He also made it sound like there was so much room in the amount of actuation for that um, aileron servo that it, they were just trying to get a rough center. But I do know mine is exactly center and that I have a lot of room one side to the other to make sure that, I ha that I'm able to uh, trim out my ailerons. Um, here uh, I'm fighting, of course, the pedo mast and the pedo itself. Um... It's there's no simple way around this that pedo and figuring out how to mount it, how to get it attached, and uh, I put a I I don't know if it really showed in the video here, but there is a 90 degree angle bracket from essentially the base of the pedo mass to the rib that it is next to. And that was just to make sure that it had the amount of strength that it needed. I've also seen some people do like a 45 all the way over to the other side of the panel and whatnot. After riveting up the pedo mast, there's, there's no way that thing's moving. Uh, it could take a bird strike, I'm quite sure, and uh, keep on ticking, so... I don't, uh, I did not feel the need for a 45. I had provisions in place to, to do that, essentially something from, say, mid-rib 
that angled over to the outer edge of that uh, pedo base. There was no reason, especially because the front of that pedo base aligns with the spar. So it's getting a lot of rigidity by that alone. Um, here you can see I am doing the bottom skins with the servo in place. Uh, you'll see I'm, I'm moving that bell crank around a whole bunch because I got to kind of figure out ways to wiggle my hand in and out of there. Again, if you want to go back to the start of the video and watch how much it takes to mount that in there and whatnot, I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to do it before the bottom skins went on. And like I talked about before, right here, this part, this rib, that is some of the hardest bucking right there to do by yourself. If you can find a family member or something like that, I highly recommend it. Um, I don't think it was on this wing. I think it was on the other wing where I have a blemish right there. And then uh, after this center rib gets done, then it's just putting on the nut plates for the access panels, and that's it. It's a very lengthy section. It's a couple of sentences, and it takes you a week or three if you're me and you have a job. But, uh, yeah. To those of you that made it to the end of this, congratulations. You wasted 17 minutes and 24 seconds of your life. And we'll do it again in the next one.